bring light to the darkness you give hope you restore every heart that broken great are you Lord it's your breath in our lungs so we pour our praise we pour our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we One with God, the Lord most 
Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jonathan, for lifting our spirits up through worship. Worship is what takes you through. And I hope that each and every one of you out in our online community are worshiping the Lord and waiting on the Lord, for he renews our strength. Night to night of renewal, spiritual renewal, to be cleansed in his presence. Amen. We're just going to go right in prayer first thing. Um, one thing we're going to pray the name of Jesus, the most powerful name for um, Allison and Phil Rosato. They both have tested positive for COVID-19. 
But Father, we thank you for your blood. So right now we just pray in the name of Jesus over Phil and Allison. We just plead the blood of Jesus over their lives. We thank you that there's nothing more powerful than your blood. There's no thing more powerful than your name. So God, we declare over them that by your stripes they are healed. We just thank you for flushing out this virus out of their systems. And we thank you, Lord, that they are whole, they are healed in the name of Jesus. And we pray for all those, God, that are struggling with this virus all over the world. That they would put their hope and faith in you, God. And you would do mighty miracles as we know you will, Lord. Father, we pray right now for those on the front line, healthcare workers, those in the police, those who have essential businesses are out there, God. We just thank you, God, for divine protection. We just pray, Lord God, for your covering over each and every one of them, Lord. Yes, we put our cover over our faces and put gloves on our hands, but God, the greatest covering is your blood over our lives, and we just thank you for that, Lord. We plead it over our lives, over our households, over our families, and we just give you all glory and praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Again, welcome. Thank you for joining us. And it's a pleasure to have you here. We're doing something a little different tonight. Last quite a few Wednesdays, we've been in my home or Pastor Steve's home. But we're here at the church, and we're having table talk. As I looked over the um, topic tonight in the passage, just started thinking about a family in my life that's very special to me and who have been a model regarding family and church and home. We're learning how to have home, we're learning how to have church at home, as we all should know how to. But this couple that I have next to me, Pastor Felix and Joanne Martinez, Soaring Diamond Ministries, they have modeled this for years. Many years ago, they felt this call to establish church in their home. They've been very busy in ministry life, and in the midst of it, their children weren't even saved because they were so busy in ministry. And by devoting themselves to their family and having church every day, all the time, right in their home, they've seen their family come to the Lord, and God's really used them, and they have this call, which they feel called to the lost tribe of Israel. That means those who have backslidden, those who have left the church, those who have been hurt and don't want nothing to do with the organized church. What we're learning through this whole quarantine is that the church is much more of an organism than it is an organization. We have church everywhere, all the time, because we are the church, and God is present in us. Yes. So I've asked them to be our guests tonight, because I know they have a lot to share with what we're talking about. And I just happened to see them on Facebook Live today, because I didn't realize today was Global Earth Day, <laughs> and they were out in a sink and cleaning their community, and called for others to join them, and the mayor joined them, and chief of police joined them, and they were cleaning up their community. Of course, they were practicing social distancing and had gloves and masks on. But this day, we were talking tonight about having a clean house. And I know a lot of you have been doing that in your homes with all the time that you have on your hands. If you're not an essential business, you've been cleaning your house. I know when you're busy, sometimes you, you don't realize how dirty your house is. But when you have time on your hands, you start noticing those things. So people have been cleaning their house. But the main word for this hour is God is trying to clean our house, clean us. And that's why I brought these two with me to discuss this as we chop up 2 Corinthians 7 in the Issue series. I just want them to greet you and uh, just share a little bit about their calling and, and what God's doing in their lives right now. Want to go first? <laughs> Well, thank, thank you, you for having us, Joshua. We appreciate it. And Pastor Steve, as well, for us being here at Praise. It's a great honor and privilege for us to join together in full labor and bring out this message. We're excited. We're Soaring Diamonds Ministry, and uh, we have a small house church. We've been uh, pointed to our children. Now they're young adults. Some are married. And uh, they have learned to accept Christ in their life and really pursue God and every aspect of their life. So what we do is we normally just share the word, inspire them through their gifts and talent, and let them move forward in their lives. And it's been great, you know. It's been 
you can see the fruit come to pass. You know, there's been times that we've been discouraged through things in life, but they have brought us together and said, hey, shake it up, we're, we're going to be just fine. So it's, it's been great. I am, as ever, everybody knows I'm the talker. <laughs> but um, just like um, Apostle Josh said, we've been ministering at home. Um, we're strong believers that, as we know, in the beginning, God created Adam and Eve. And then, of course, the children came. So the first ministry is to our families. So we're glad um, to have this opportunity to speak about what it is to have a clean house because it starts here and then it works its way out that way. It's, um, there's a lot to talk about, so I'm just going to, you know, just go with the flow and see how God takes us. Amen, amen. Well, this big National Earth Day or Global Earth Day, you know, we came from the earth. You know, God breathed out of the dust and formed us, so... The most important thing and the reason why the earth is so polluted and so dirty is because of us. We've been given this earth. We're responsible for this earth. And it's up to us to take care of it. And so we need to let God take care of us first, though. Then out of us, we take care of the earth. And so um, often how you take care of your household shows who you are, what kind of life you're living. If our house is a disaster, most likely that's where we're at. In our, in our life, our, we're, we're, we got things out of order. I like things to be in order. I like things to be clean. I don't know about you guys, but I like... You already know. You've been to my house. <laughs> I know you do. And that's how it is. So I've been going through one house after... One room after another in our house, just getting it in order. And any room that's not in order drives me crazy. I want to see it done. But more than that, though, I want to see my life in order internally. Amen. I want my house to be clean. Uh, Pastor, Pastor Joanne, Joanne was on Facebook Live on Sunday, too, talking about the grace of God. And I want to rewind because in chapter 7 of 2 Corinthians, it says, therefore. So before we even get into verse 1, let's go back into six, chapter 6 and see what therefore is. Therefore. I want to go all the way back to chapter 6, verse 1. And it says, working together with him, we also appeal to you. Don't receive God's grace in vain. They were sharing about grace Sunday. And this is a work of grace that God is doing. Are we taking advantage of the grace that he's doing? I know that we have all kinds of you know, thoughts about what's really going on in this world with this epidemic. But bottom line is God works all things for our good. Are we allowing his grace to be at work in our lives? Are we growing through this? Are we being transformed through all this? That is my heart. As it says, and Pastor Steve taught this Sunday on chapter 7, through the framework of Pastor Jonathan, who wasn't able to share, and we focus on the promises. And that's what it says here in chapter 7. Therefore, dear friends, since we have such promises, what were these promises? Well, the Bible is full of promises. But what Paul was sharing right there was the last few verses in chapter 6. I will dwell among them and walk among them. I will be their God and they will be my people. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch any unclean thing. Get rid of all the filth. And I will welcome you. I will be a father to you. And you will be my sons and daughters to me, says the Lord Almighty. So what he's saying there is, now that you've given your life to me, your house is mine. You're no longer the owner of your house. It's mine. And I want your house to be clean. I want my house to be clean. And I'm coming in and I'm here to clean house. God wants a clean house. He wants us to be holy as he is holy. And then back to chapter 7, verse 1, it says, Therefore, dear friends, since we have such a promise, let us cleanse ourselves from every impurity of the flesh and spirit, completing our sanctification in the fear of God. God wants to cleanse us. He wants to wipe us clean. We're to be holy as he is holy. Every area of our life should reflect his holiness. God wants to expose our idols, the things that we've relied on, the things that we've put too much of an attention towards, more than God. Removing these things. 
the impurities in our life, things that we've tolerated. That's what Paul was upset with the Corinthians. They had tolerated sin for too long. That's why he was correcting them in his letters to Corinth, because they had tolerated sin. So with all that framework, I want to ask this question to you guys to take it a little deeper. How is God using this quarantine to clean house? So what do you believe God is doing through all this? And also our online audience, if you have any input, if you have any questions, feel free. I'm watching it right here on Facebook, and I'll, um, I'll add that to our discussion. So, Well, that's a, that's a great question. Um, you know, one of the things that we've always said, um, and this is one of the reasons that we have um, church at home, um, we know that, you know, the first century church, this is what church models, church at home. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, we've become so out of tune with what that looks like that it's easy for us to hide in the confines of the four walls of what we now think church is. Mm -hmm. But um, key something that you said was that the church is organic which means that we're not just church when we go into the building on Sunday or whatever day of the week it is. Um, and it's important now that we're stuck at home. We're getting to be able to see clear where we are in our relationships, where we are in our relationship with the Lord. What is our condition? What is the condition of our house? You know, and... Being a member of the body of Christ for a very long time, I've had an opportunity to go, you know, worship in a lot of different places. And it's, it's great the way, you know, a lot of places keep their houses. Like you said, we love a clean house. But a lot of times we get so consumed with what's happening within the physical um, edifice or building that we forget that God is not looking for a clean edifice. He's not looking for great chairs. He's not looking for great rugs. He's not looking for great lighting. He's looking to us. What is the condition of your heart? What are your thoughts? What is your conversation? How do you feel about your brothers, your sisters, your enemies, your family? And, you know, it's real easy to hide. You know, we go to work, we do our job, you know, we smile with everybody, we talk with everybody. Like I say all the time, you know a lot of times of where a person is because when you tell them, do you know the Lord? One of the experiences that I have with ministering, you know, in the streets a lot of times is that the first thing they'll say is, yeah, I belong to, Baptist. yeah, mm -hmm. I, I'm a Baptist, or I'm a this, or I belong to this congregation. Mm -hmm. And then I always say, no, no, even, you know, when people come into our lives, that we meet through, you know, son or one of my daughters or whatever. The, and I say all the time, are you a believer? Mm -hmm. And when they say, oh, I belong to such and such a church, right away I'm like, okay, we have a work to do. Because we're so consumed with what a person says, but not with the fruit. Mm -hmm. And that's what we need to be looking at. And during this time, to go back to your question, we're getting to personally see where we are. Because the truth is, you know, a lot of people are struggling. And, you know, I, we jokingly say all the time, what quarantine? You know, we're not really experiencing what a lot of people are experiencing because, you know, church for us is everyday life. That reminds me of that movie that we did years ago, Everyday Life. But, you know, being believers is an everyday thing. And when we're able to live lives for Christ on a day-to-day -day basis, we're able to look at our hearts. But when we're so busy, which this doesn't allow us to be, we're able to really see where we are individually. Because come on, let's be realistic. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we get so caught up with, you know, I have to go to work, then I got to take the kids to activities, and on the weekend I have to do this, we have church on this day, I have to go food shopping, I have to wash clothes, then you don't have an opportunity to really examine yourself, to really see, hey, where am I? And now my viewers would agree that we're getting to see exactly where we are. You know, a lot of times, 
and, and I'm going to say this, and I'm going to pass it back to you, Pastor Josh, or maybe if you have something to say, but we find ourselves in our homes now, you know, when we're with the kids all day, or the spouses, you know, we're together all day, or whatever the situation is, and a lot of people are finding themselves like, oh, I can't take this anymore. And as believers, it gives us the opportunity to really examine where we are where our children are, where our relationship with our spouses, where's our relationship with our kids? Mm -hmm. Because now you're home all day. I'm imagining that now everybody has an opportunity to sit at the dinner table. Mm -hmm. What does that look like? You know what I'm saying? So this situation is really getting us in a place where the rubber has met the road. Mm -hmm. Where are you, bruh, sis? Your son actually just posted on here. Michael said, we have to take more responsibility in our homes and relationships instead of the opportunity to hide. So home often becomes just this place where you hide out. Absolutely. You're not dealing with it. Especially, you know, parents, it's time we've got to take a hold of our household. We've got to deal with some things. Now that we have no excuses, our kids are there. Our grandkids are there, you know, some of them are over, whatever it is, now is the time to deal with some things and, you know, step it up. It's time to step it up. It's time to take a hold of our households and make sure that every relationship is right. We're called, we've been talking a lot about this, ministers of reconciliation. We're called to be reconciled with God and reconciled with each other. We want our whole households to be saved, our whole households to be delivered and healed. But we got to be available. We can't be hiding out in the back all the time and not available for God to use us. Um, one of the things that you said um, in that first verse of chapter 7 is about promises. Mm -hmm. And one of the promises of God, and I hold to this, Acts 16, 31, if I'm saved, my household will be saved. Mm -hmm. But there's a responsibility. You know, a lot of times we, we act like, you know, Serving God is like magic. Uh-uh. This is not how this works. We have a responsibility. We have a responsibility to our spouses. We have a responsibility to our children. But first and foremost, we have a responsibility to God. And from that overflow is where everything else will move. You know, but one of the things, too, is that, you know, a lot of times as parents, we complain about, what are they teaching my kids at school? I don't like what they did. Mm-hmm. Now, guess what? We have the opportunity to deposit into our children, into our grandchildren. A lot of people are talking about, man, I would like to homeschool. This is an opportunity to see what that's like. A lot of times there's a lot of complaints, you know, with the teachers and the school system. We have an opportunity now to be hands-on with our children and really see what this is like. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times, oh, I would love to cook dinner for my family every night. For a lot of people, now's the opportunity. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't ever get a chance to talk to my husband because, you know, he's at work all day and he comes up and he's tired. Guess what? Mm -hmm. Now the opportunity is there. And of course, you know, there's the, the group that they're still, thankfully, you know, at the hospitals and, you know, at the supermarkets and so on and so forth. But in general, most people at home, and this is the opportunity for us to really uh, put a mark on our family. So it's, I think it's an, it's an exciting time. That's the way I look at it. Amen. Amen. Did you see anything to add? Well, um, for starters, for me, at home, I, I've only learned how to rely on the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Like in Romans, uh, one of my good scriptures that I love a lot that I, I, I hold tight to is Romans 12, 2. Mm -hmm. It says, uh, do not be conformed of this age, mm -hmm. but be ye transformed by the renewing of our mind. And Hallelujah. to me, that is helps me because I like everyone out there is seeing what's happening on the news and it's at home and their loved ones 
So you, you feel discouraged. Some people that don't know how to rely on the Word of God but don't even know how to understand the Word of God, mm -hmm. they don't know how to, to trust in that. Yeah. So my encouragement for those that are out there, you know, for, number, for starters, you have to be born again. You have to know, allow the Holy Spirit to dwell in you. Renew your mind first to devote your life to Christ and allow God to intercede in your life by a friend, by a co-laborer. You have somebody that's out there that, that knows the word. And for me, in my house, this is what we practice, not carrying the word of God on the side, down the street, but having it in our hearts, applying it to our lives. Do not, try not to be discouraged with the things of the world, but be a light in the world. Help your neighbors. Don't be selfish. So in a time like this, which is sad, I see a lot of things come to pass, and at the same token I see, and I, it's just the word coming to pass. It's, 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 it's coming. So we cannot be afraid. We, we, gotta be, we have to stand strong and trust in God that he's going to make way through, through this time. It's happened. If you look at the history of the Bible, you know, I was just listening this morning to uh, um, Joseph. Huh? No, no, no. Oh. Uh, the book of, uh, oh. And, and Joseph. <laughs> and um, it was talking about him and uh, Prince Pharaoh, that he had a dream. So I'm like, wow. And then just the Holy Spirit kept on revealing to me, you know, we have to prepare for times like this. Not to be afraid, but prepare so that we can, we have the tools. The tools are in, in the Word of God. We have to be able to deliver the tools for the ones that are hurting. And we so call, and that's why it's so important to do this because I had a vision back then when we started House Church, and the Lord showed me the buildings of the each church is the walls falling down. Mm -hmm. And he showed me people walking out of the buildings in groups. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's what we're living in today. Yeah. And people walking out to groups are in their homes, mm -hmm. trying to figure out how to do things. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we, what we do at home, we just apply the word, we live by the word, and we go by our daily lives. But at the same time, we help those. We go and spread the word. We try to encourage people by the way we live, the, the way we we act in our business, the way we deliver our, our, our jobs, mm -hmm. in every aspect. Mm -hmm. So that's where we stand. Mm -hmm. And it's had helped. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Um, a lot of people are complaining regarding, you know, they can't go to work, can't go to church. But I think that's two things that God is removing from our lives regarding putting those things on a pedestal that they shouldn't be, making them idols. We're all called to work. But we got to understand that our main work is our home. That's our That's primary. Right. We're talking about God will hold us accountable yes. to what he's given us. And the main thing that he's given us above everything else is our family. It's our household. And so that's where we first need to go to work. Just because we're not at our job does not mean we're not at work. God is at work, and he wants us to get at work with us. He wants us to be at work with him. And so there's things to do in our home. And not just cleaning natural stuff. I'm talking about spiritual stuff. And the church, we got to learn how to know God for ourselves. we got to learn how to get in the Bible for ourselves. we got to learn how to hear from heaven and pray and go to war in the Spirit because this invisible enemy is only going to be defeated by an invisible God through the Spirit, by prayer, through warfare. So I'm hoping we're growing from all this. That's my desire. The, the next question I had that I wanted for us to discuss is, how do we get clean? You know, we know if we go out and work hard, seven, just some, um, the first thing you got to do, what Paul was telling them is, you got to accept the message that Paul was giving them. He was bringing correction, and they had to accept it. So it means that they had to accept the reality that they stink. You know, I've had, I'm not going to say who in my household, Somebody in my household doesn't always smell good. I want to put their business out there. Somebody in my household doesn't always smell good. And we tell them, and they, and they don't accept it. <laughs> they don't go and take a shower. So they continue to stink. But first thing we got to do is admit it. I stink. And I need to get clean. So that's the first thing. 
And that takes humility. For somebody to tell you you stink, usually we don't like to hear that, so we deny it. Well, something with you. You must be smelling yourself. <laughs> so, but we've got to be humble and admit it. Yes, I stink, and yes, I need to get clean. That's how transformation begins. And then what that really is called is now you're going to a place of repentance. When sin is exposed, when our stink is exposed, then we've got to repent. And, and that's when God steps in. Until we really repent, God doesn't step in. So if we think God's going to change our life and we're not repenting, it's not going to happen. So this time, if my people are humble, by the, humble my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, then I will hear from heaven. So if we're going to see change in our nation, change in our lives, it takes repentance. So since, why are things so dirty? <laughs> um, you said that and the first thing I remember is that Felix always says, babe, always talk in a way that people understand. Mm -hmm. And just like you said, Second Chronicles seven fourteen, because that's like one of those scriptures that we use. But I think one part that was left out, that you left out is if we turn from our wicked ways. Mm -hmm. And I think that one of the issues is that First of all, we want to see God's hand move. There's something that he's looking for from us. That's a given. God is definitely going to get our attention. And it's like, it's like you know, you tell your kids sometimes, I'm going to keep telling you something until I don't see a change that means you haven't learned. And me as a parent, my kids can tell you, I'm going to keep on and keep on and keep on until you've changed, we're not done. Mm -hmm. And that's the only way you get excellence. And I believe the Father's doing the same thing with us. Now, this is my encouragement in this section. How do we get clean? The first thing that we need to do is we have to be humble. But what does humility look like? First of all, we have to be open. We have to be willing. It's like if you've ever been addicted to something, mm -hmm. the first step is to acknowledge. And let me tell you something. I say it all the time. We, let me go back. I'm a hot mess. That's why I need Jesus. We're a hot mess. That's why we need Jesus. And what happens? That we've lived, can I just be honest? Mm -hmm. We've lived for so long around communities that take on this attitude of, I don't make mistakes. I don't do anything wrong. And that's the biggest problem because if I know that I have a problem, but you act like you're perfect, why am I going to bring that to you? So you be coming at my neck, that just means that, you know, you're going to be saying things back at me in a negative way. But we have to get to the point where we're open, that we're transparent. That's what authenticity looks like. You know what? I am very tough. Everybody that knows me knows I can be very tough. But equally tough, I'm very open. If I'm wrong, I tell people all the time, if you love me, tell me. Don't be complaining, but you don't come to me and help me get better. So I think that one, two things, we have to admit, like you said, that we stink, that we got some issues. We have issues. As the body, we have issues. If you think that you've accomplished, that you got the answers, that you're perfect, that you know it all, you miss God. I'm going to tell you right off the rip. I mean, from the very top, I'm going to let you know. But secondly, we have to be willing to help others grow. Mm -hmm. And we also, it's reciprocal. We also have to be open for others to help us grow. Because nobody has all the answers. You know, I say all the time, I quote this all the time. There's a rapper, his name's The Truth, and he always says, experiences are for fools. If I already seen you jump from there and you got hurt doing it, why do I have to go do that? Mm -hmm. And that's the purpose of the word. We have example after example. What is the purpose of the word? That we could apply it to ourselves. 
And like Felix said, a lot of times people feel as though, I don't even understand what that's saying. But we, the body of Christ, we're supposed to be the, the Jesus. We're supposed to be the living um, organism, the living body of Christ, setting the examples, giving the instruction. Asking questions of others and being open ourselves to be corrected. There's too much offense in the body. Way too much offense. And it's something that we used to say all the time. If you're offended, you need to die. Oh my goodness, what is she talking about? That means there's too much of me. And, and as you know, there's been times that I've been offended. And you know, I've come and I said, listen, I'm feeling some type of way. What's going on? But because we're mature, we can say, you know what? I dropped the ball. Mm -hmm. So that's how you get clean. You have to be open to be corrected. And you always also have to be open to in loving kindness correct others. Mm -hmm. That's the only way. Amen. 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 Anything? Transparency. Yeah. Transparency. Your other son said that too. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Anthony, transparency. transparency. There's no other way. Yeah. There's so much less conflict when you can just be real and open. I find that to be true. I have very little conflict in my life simply by the grace of God breaking me. And so when you come to me or someone else comes to me with something I did wrong and I really open myself to God and say, you know what, you're right, you know, <laughs> and just admit it. And that's it. That's it. We don't have to go on and on and on and go month after month and year after year. Some people have conflicts that have lasted for years. Some of you in your home right now have conflicts right there that you've held on to forever. Are we taking advantage of the grace of God right now? Because this work that we're talking about isn't our own might. We're so scared to, to um, approach somebody. So scared of, 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 of conflict that we just hide from it. We avoid it. And yet there's grace for it. So we got to look at God's grace. Get past ourselves and look at God's grace. He gives grace. He just, ha he gives us favor. He just opens our heart. It doesn't have to be so, we fear it so much. Fear conflict so much. Fear, and we just need to fear God. God, he's the one that's given us forgiveness. It's not a work, it's grace. So to accept forgiveness, to give forgiveness, it's a grace. We just got to enjoy God's grace, and life is so much easier. I think that the word grace is like a word that's thrown around, mm -hmm. you know, and I think a lot of times we don't really, we really don't get grace. And I think that that's why we walk around in offense, mm -hmm. because I think that a lot of times we don't realize that everything I am is because of His grace. Everything that I am is because of him. It's got nothing to do with me. The word is clear. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. That's grace. Because think about it. We already know that we know how to mess up. That's a given. Now, how do we get past that? That's where grace comes in. And if we were to get to that place where we embrace, where we get the understanding of what grace is, then we're able to say, you know what? I fell short. I messed up. I've been wrong. But thank you, God, for grace. And that's moment to moment. Moment to moment. It's His grace. Salvation is because of His grace. Everything about this walk is because of His grace. So it's really important. It's really important that we will continue to ask God to reveal His word to us. That we may be able to walk authentically in the Lord. I remember the time that we taught authenticity in Christ. And everything stems from that. Because... We just need to be transparent. We just need to be open. And if truth be told, people have a challenge with that. We've all been challenged with that. We've all been challenged. And the more that you practice, the easier it gets. But we have to be open. And the only way that we're going to be open is, again, if we open ourselves up 
realizing that, you know what? Jesus is the one that died for me on the cross. Mm -hmm. People are, my, my, my mom used to say all the time, if you do things right, people are going to talk about you. Yeah. If you do things wrong, people are going to talk about you. Mm -hmm. She used to say, what do you care? Make sure you do things right. And you don't have to worry. And then now that we're in Christ, because that was not in Christ, and she didn't use those nice words either. But now that we're in Christ, we understand that the blood of Jesus covers us. It says even our enemies will look at favorable towards us. That's right. When we do what's right. We only actually have a few more minutes because our uh, battery and our camera's about to die. But I wanted to close with the last part and it's how do we know when we're clean? You know, it's pretty obvious naturally when you're clean, you feel this. You feel so refreshed. You come out of the shower after being dirty. Felix, you get, you get pretty dirty doing the construction work you do. Yeah, he does. <laughs> when you come it's home, stinky. <laughs> and you take that shower, you feel good. <laughs> I know for me, when I feel, I love to put cologne on. I love to smell good. I love my wife to notice that I smell good. Okay. <laughs> That's for me. I know I'm clean because I smell good. So this little thing I put here was we are clean when we smell good. We have the aroma, and it's shared about that, about importance. When you've really repented, truly, what is the product of repentance is purity. The product of repentance is purity. So you, you basically spray on the cologne, mm. pure, and you smell good. When you're pure, you're pure. There's just an aroma that comes out of you. There's this freedom all about you. There's this, um, your disposition is just, you're different. You know, when you're clean, you're different. There's a total disposition different from somebody that's dirty and yes. somebody's clean. And it, it feels good to be clean. And so I encourage each and every one of you to get clean. When we're clean, what happens now? We actually become God's cleansing agents. agents. So the more clean we become, the more God can use us to help clean others. There's just something like this whole disease is contagious. Where being clean becomes contagious. My God. That's so it's just like the virus can be passed on by touching. You, when you're clean and you touch on somebody, you release cleansing to them. That's what we need. We need to be empowered by the Holy Spirit, clean by the Holy Spirit, and then be used to cleanse others by the power of the Holy Spirit. And then those who come near us, when you're around somebody that's truly clean, you just get refreshed. It's right. like they become rivers of living water. Out of them come Flows. showers. Flows. You're like become the shower. You become the waterfall of God. A couple of closing remarks. remarks. Yeah, I just, I just want to say this because I don't want the camera to go out and this is not said. We're by no means saying that, you know, we've reached a plateau and, you know, we've arrived. But it's important to realize that this is, like the Word of God says, is rivers of living water. What, does, what do rivers do? They flow. So we got to continually stay in the Word, stay in His presence, stay open, and He continually cleans us and renews us because we're constantly getting contaminated. Thoughts are constantly coming. Words sometimes come out. Sometimes we hear things that we shouldn't. So it's important to remember that we got to continually stay in his word, continually renew our mind, and he continually cleans us, and we continually are agents. Oh. <laughs> you good? Can you follow that? <laughs> <laughs> cleansiness. I love cleansiness. So I would say um, it starts with our minds and our heart. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to examine our day and see the motive of our day. What are our plans to, what to do, how to do, how to go about things, and our attitude. Mm -hmm. Remember, like Jeff Beecham used to teach us, mm -hmm. you have to have an attitude of gratitude. We're walking in grace, we're grateful. Yes. God is merciful, he's done so much for us, but at the same token, it's, it's not just for us, it's for us to pass it down. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm a strong believer when it comes for our, our young, gen this young generation, we love to pour into them our, the model of being an honest person, have dignity in everything you do, and just push them forward and say, look, this looks like this, but this is what the word says. Do not be discouraged with the things of the world be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Stand firm on his word. Move forward. Fight this fight. Mm -hmm. Don't be discouraged. Amen. 
so that someone else can be encouraged. Pass the baton. You know what I mean? Hallelujah. That's right on. And I was, uh, I've been sharing regarding this issue series that the key to getting free of issues is the solvent. Just like hydrogen peroxide. You put that on any cut. All you got to do is apply it. It's a solvent. Our issues, we got the answers. It's in the Word. We know the Word. We apply it. It solves it. And the issue is gone. We're clean. We have so the tools. We got the tools. It's by grace, too. Are we using the tools with the grace that God's given us to get clean? If we're clean, life is good. Yet tomorrow, we might get dirty. We get got clean again. So I thank um, Pastor Joanne, Pastor Felix, Soaring Diamonds for being with me at this table talk. Hope each of you out there are getting clean. It's been a blessing. I hope to do it again. We know we will do it again. God bless you. Have a wonderful night.